Well, it's a great privilege to have with us Dr. Gary Smalley, a man who many consider to be North America's foremost expert on relationships. His many books have sold over six million copies. He's appeared on countless TV and radio shows like Oprah, Larry King Live, The Today Show. And he's the founder and president of the Smalley Relationship Center. Now we know it's not Valentine's month, but we've asked Dr. Smalley to help us all strengthen our marriage relationships mm -hmm. during this month of September as our featured Truth To Go teacher. And we're so grateful he said yes. Mm -hmm. And he'll be sharing from his book, I Promise You, forever. But before the series begins, we want to sit down with him in a bit of a get to know you mm -hmm. session. And so Dr. Smalley, welcome to Thank 100 you Hamley Street. Thank you very much. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah, it's great to be back here. Yeah, we've always appreciated mm -hmm. the times when you, you've been here mm -hmm. and even on the on the couch with the, the full circle full ladies. The full circle couch, you were with us <laughs> most recently. That. You I were surrounded, you were outnumbered. <laughs> I like that. You held your own though. It was, it was a very good program. Oh, we're you. so excited yeah. that not only are we gonna be able to sit down and get to know you a little bit more right sure. now, but we're gonna have you all month long mm -hmm. and choose to go. Well, Dr. Smalley, uh, let's uh, let's back up a fair bit, and just because sure. a lot mm -hmm. of people they probably you know heard or, or, or oh, read yeah. or, mm -hmm. or heard you on the TV or radio, and right. and they just kind of hear your advice side of, of right. things, mm -hmm. but uh, just say if people kind of get a little insight on who mm -hmm. is Gary sure. Smalley, what makes him tick, and maybe okay. even back to when you even started getting into this whole area. Sure. Um, Bring us a sure. little bit of your story. Summarize my life in a, in a few minutes. <laughs> there you go. Okay. What a challenge. Actually, uh, I was raised, I'm the last of six kids. And so I was raised in a sort of a dysfunctional home where my father was angry a lot. And, uh, and my mom, uh, her personality was real pleasant. And, uh, you know, she wasn't pushy. So my dad sort of dominated the house and her. And uh, so uh, now that I know what I know about marriage and family, I wish that he would have known some of this information, but he didn't get it, and mm -hmm. he didn't get it from his dad. And so, um, and he lost a lot of money back in the Depression time, and so he just became angry and felt like he was cheated and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And so he missed the joy of life, and I now see that about him. But anyway, because of that, I never really had an example of a husband and a father. And so then when I got married, I just thought, well, this will be easy. And, you know, I'm marrying this beautiful, pleasant, great woman, and it'll just be great. And so I began to do some of the same things to her that my dad did to my mom without realizing because we just pick up stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I, and I didn't even realize at the time, but I'd picked up a lot of his beliefs, which are really the things that control our behavior. Mm -hmm. So, and I didn't know that. So anyway, so the first five years of our marriage was really rough. And uh, she didn't even, she knew she wasn't going to divorce me because she was really committed to Christ. But, you know, you know, shooting me or something, you know, or whatever, <laughs> you know, might be an option. But, uh, but anyway, it was a miserable experience for both yeah. of us. We lost our feelings for each other, you know. And, and the average couple divorced between five and seven years because it takes that much time to build up that much anger mm. uh, and resentment, you know, mm. towards your mate to kill your affection. Mm -hmm. Anger always puts you in the dark and it kills your affection. And for one another, and you can't remember why you liked the person the first, mm. you know, so anyway, mm. that's where we were. And so my life started changing when I um, realized and I confessed to her that she wasn't first place in my life, that everything else was hunting, fishing in the church. I was a pastor and everybody else. You were a pastor yes, at the time. And, and everybody else was wow. always ahead of her. Mm. It didn't matter. I mean, if somebody called me and there was dinner, I'd leave, you know, to help the people. I was mm. called to the people, you mm. know, and so. Anyway, I finally understood that, that I needed to honor her above everybody else on this earth, people. And uh, as I began to put her first place in my life, she began to shove me into ministry opportunities. And she was really my cheerleader. Mm. I'm a dreamer. She's a dream maker. Hmm. So that we fit together. She's a, a kind of a detailed person, likes order and, and things to work right, and likes to buy quality things and wants things to be quality. And so that I'd have an idea, a dream, something, and she could take that dream and make it happen. So that's what she's been doing for me for, you know, for 43 years. Been married to Norma for 43 years. Yeah. Wow. Now, I want to back up for just a minute because you said that everything changed about five years into marriage right. where you finally started putting her yes, ahead of exactly. other people. Right. What was the light bulb moment? What happened that made you realize I that you had to do that? I was sitting in the kitchen, uh, came home from church at lunch and walked into the kitchen. It was ice 
you know, she was working, doing something, and... Uh, Ice in the kitchen, not yeah. out the house. Yeah, in yeah, the yeah, kitchen. in okay. the kitchen. Uh, okay. Her body language is, I hate you, but I'm stuck with you. That's really what it was. And so I couldn't, I just thought the whole thing was her fault, that she mm -hmm. just wasn't a submissive wife, mm -hmm. you know, and wasn't, a, you know, godly enough, you know. And if she would just change her life, I could maybe have a, be happy and we'd have a good marriage. I, I never saw any of my own responsibility. So that particular day, she, I said, uh, you know, what's wrong? Which I'd asked many times, and she said nothing, you know, not looking at me. And uh, I said, I said, you know what? I really don't feel like going back to church, you know, and ministering uh, with you feeling the way you do towards me and me towards you. And I said, what's this kind of a sham thing that we've got here? And it's really hard to preach and teach, you know, when I'm teaching out of emptiness about mm -hmm. anything relational with us and our family. I had two kids at the time. And so she says, no, she didn't want to say it. She said, I've said it before, and you don't get it, and you don't remember it anyway. And so this is a waste of time, so just keep going like this, and this is what I'm stuck with. Mm -hmm. you know. And I realized the desperate situation, but I didn't know what to do about it. So I just begged her to explain it to me. So she came over, tears, and sat at the little table about this size, and uh, she began to s point out that everything in my life was more important to me than she is to me. She said, the television is more important because if I need to talk to you and me, no, no, this program's on or the game's not over or, or the newspaper is more important or, you know, or, or fishing or whatever. And so she just is put a whole bunch of things together. But I actually said, do you actually think that I believe that the television programs are more important than you? She said, absolutely. You know, just tears. Mm -hmm. And, I, and, and I, then I really started just listening and, and understanding and feeling a little bit sad you know, and thinking to myself, wow, I'm living with a person who thinks that these things are more important than... So I actually did this, and it was all spontaneous, because I hadn't premeditated any of this. And I actually said to her, you know what, that's got to end today. 